Welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today it's hot process time again. I've done a couple of hot process videos. I did the same coloring on the previous ones. Well today I want to mix it up a little bit. I'm still relatively new to hot process soap making but I am loving it. It's very different than I was expecting. So uh, one of the things that I like about hot process is that you can add the fragrance after it's cooked and gone through saponification. So I like to use essential oils because I feel like they stay, um, well, they're not getting overheated because you've already done the cooking. In my mind, I just feel like maybe some more of the properties are going to be in there. Well, I don't know. I'm not a scientist specifically, but it just kind of makes sense to me intuitively that putting the essential oils in after the cook, more of the goodness of those essential oils will remain. For the essential oils that I'm using today, I'm going to use a combination of sweet orange and lime. Doesn't that sound juicy? I just, they smell great together. So those are going to be the essential oils I'll put in after the cook and for the colorant. I got this a while ago, hibiscus flower powder. And I got this at Walmart and it was over in the strangest place. It was like by the gluten-free sort of healthy food section and they had this, but look at that gorgeous color. Well, in cold process, it doesn't stay this pretty color. It's, it's beautiful. Hibiscus flower is really good for your skin. It's wonderful and it's pretty, but uh, it went sort of beigey brown. Um, I'm going to put this in the hot process today to test and see if it will stay this color if I color it after the cook. We'll see. You're coming along with me. Let's give it a run. And if it doesn't, if it goes to brown, it's still beautiful and good for you. So it's going to go in there anyway. So that'll be one color swirl. And then I'm thinking about putting my goji berry powder. <laughs> this is just organic dehydrated goji berries. Um, powdered up and uh, it's wonderful and it's a beautiful orange color so uh, I'm thinking about uh, doing my color swirl because my hot process recipe is fluid enough to get a nice hanger swirl and I love it I still has kind of a rustic top on it haven't figured out how to tackle hot process tops yet but the inside is gorgeous and I'm really loving the finished bars on the ones that I've made so that's what I've got. I'm going to pull it all together, get my crock pots out. We're going to make a nice big batch. I will share the full recipe for this hot process soap in the description box below, and I'll tell you what I'm doing as we go through it. But uh, let's get the crock pots out and get ready to make some hot process soap. I'm all ready to get going here on this hot process soap today. So let me tell you what I've got going on in the crock pots right now. I am just melting the oils, um, and I've got my lye solution off to the side. So in here, uh, and I'll just say one, so this is a double recipe. So in one of these, I have 12 ounces of coconut, six ounces of palm, four ounces cocoa butter, two ounces shea, six ounces of castor oil, and 30 ounces of olive oil. And that's in there, and then repeat that over here. Uh, and so today I'm gonna do something different. I have not tried this in a hot process yet. I'm gonna do milk in oil method. I had some goat milk. I have lots of goat milk. It's springtime, swimming in goat milk. So I'm going to add some, I discounted, water discounted my lye solution, and I'm going to add the goat milk into the oils. Um, also in these, I have four teaspoons of sodium lactate in each of these buckets, and that helps keep it fluid, or from what I've researched on hot process, the sodium lactate um, helps firm it up in the mold, but it also helps hot process stay fluid. So sodium lactate is in here also. Um, and I am going to add some kale and clay to the oils. So that's going to be what's in the oils. And then when we get to the lye step, we'll take care of that. So this is a two tablespoon scoop, and I'm doing a little bit shy. So that's probably about one and a half tablespoons. So I'll do that in each of these. And then let me grab my goat milk. And as I blend that in, I can break up some of these chunks as this oil is melting. I have my crock pots on high right now as I'm melting the oils, and then once they get almost all the way melted, I will turn the crock pots down to low as we proceed on with cooking the soap. So let me, there's our wonderful goat milk. And uh, for water discounting for goat milk, um, or for any milk, 
When you water discount, the only rule of thumb that cannot be broken is whatever volume of lye you're using, sodium hydroxide, you have to have at least that much liquid to mix it with. You can never go less than the lye. So in this recipe, well, I'll tell you about the lye when we get there. Let me get this mixed in. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Get this blended, and I will try not to run my stick blender on the bottom of these crock pots. It's like nails on a chalkboard, and I apologize for that. If I hit the bottom, I know it's nasty sound, so I apologize ahead of time. <gasps> All right, all of the uh, clay and milk and the oils are melted and it's all ready to go here. So let me tell you about my lye solution now. Um, I have two different buckets. I mixed everything separately. So uh, in this pot, I have 8.2 ounces of lye and 13 ounces of distilled water. Um, I also have, before I added the lye, so in dis distilled water, I dissolved a tablespoon of sugar and then once that was dissolved, I put in some tussa silk fibers and then put my sodium hydroxide in and that melted the silk down in there. So that's what's going on in here. So that has 13 ounces of water. I used um, eight ounces of goat milk in each of these. So that is the ratio for water. What else do I have to tell you? Um, okay, so for my super fat, after this is cooked, so this recipe is at a 5% super fat. And uh, to that, after this is cooked, to keep it fluid, I have three tablespoons of yogurt and one ounce of hemp seed oil, unrefined organic hemp seed oil, which I think is just luscious. Um, and that'll go in each of these. And that one ounce of hemp seed oil doesn't knock the super fat up too much. It might bring it up to a 6%, but it, it stays really close to about a 5% super fat on this soap. Um, for my essential oils here. This is a lime and sweet orange essential oil blend and I looked up the max usage rate for it. Um, the lime essential is about 3% per pound of oils and the sweet orange is about 5% per pound of oils. All that said and done, this little cocktail here is about three ounces of essential oils. We'll go into each of these buckets. And then, last but not least, I have my goji berry powder, just mixed up in a little bit of water. And this is my hibiscus flower powder, and it sucked up all the water, so it's kind of thick. I'm hoping it blends in okay. I may add a little more water in there. And that is why I went a little low on the water here, because I knew I was going to be adding um, water into my powders. So, um, I mean, when I say a little, I'm talking like less than an ounce. So it's not a big factor, but anyway. That's what's going on with all the extras. <laughs> my screen is so full here. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get my lye mixtures blended in up to a nice trace, and then we'll put the lids on and let these start cooking. Um, I did turn my crock pots down to low now. They were on high to melt the oil, so they're pretty warm. Um, that radiant heat is staying in there. And after I get a trace on these, I will put the lids on and let them start to cook and I'll bring you back when we're ready to do our first stir down. All right, so my crock pots are at two different temperatures. I'm having to turn this one on high because it's not cooking as fast as this one. But this one is having a little oil separation. It's starting to cook in. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a stir here. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm gonna throw my stick blender in here because it's acting a little weird and I'm wondering if it's the milk and the oil there that's doing it. I've never had this happen before. So I'm gonna try and get it back up to emulsion here. If I can. So I did um, blend it all together again, and I wonder if what happened is um, I didn't have a thick enough trace when I set the lids on to start cooking. Uh, you know, I'm still relatively new to hot process, so if you are a hot process soap maker, um, is that what caused my separation? That's what I'm wondering, but it seems to come together here, so I'm just gonna proceed forward and uh, let it keep cooking, but I'm wondering if I didn't have a thick enough trace when I started. 
and that's why I had a little separation going on. So I'm just guessing. Let's just keep moving forward. I hope this pulls together. <laughs> All right, it's been about 15 minutes um, and it's looking more normal to me now or what I think to be normal for hot process. It's cooking up. So I'm gonna stir this down and uh, just keep cooking. It's very fluid. I'm wondering if that milk and oil is just an odd thing for hot process. I, I need to research this more, but it is kind of going through the mashed potato phase here, which is great, or applesauce, I guess. I don't know all the nicknames for the different phases, but this is looking more normal, like I would expect it to look. Apple sauce or mashed potatoes, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think it looks like? Anyway, I'm gonna pop the lid back on here and let it cook a little more. And um, I did adjust, so this crock pot is on low because it gets hotter than this crock pot. This one is on high. So I uh, have to remember that for the future. Pop this lid back on, and now I will get this lid off and give this one a stir down. A little bit of separation. Yeah, something's going on. I think I did not have it up to a strong enough trace when I started the cook. That's, that's just kind of the conclusion I'm coming to. If I'm off on that, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear if you are an experienced hot processor, what you think that was, the separation going on. Because there's no fragrance in here causing that. It's just the oils and the lye. So um, I'm going to guess that it's that I didn't have a thick enough trace to start with. So living and learning, moving forward. It looks like, you know, it's going to come together here, which I'm really thankful for. <laughs> I kind of had a panic there for a minute. I'm like, oh no, am I going to lose this batch? But I think it's pulling together. Um, and again, this crock pot's a little behind that one. So I'm hoping this one will heat up and catch up because I kind of need them to be done cooking at the same time. So there we go, first stir down. So after that separation, this has been a total of about a half hour in here from the time we started. So we'll let these cook and we will come back when it's time to do the next stir down. All right, time for another stir down on this one, the hotter crock pot. And uh, it's definitely fluffing up. <laughs> it's looking good though. I might just run a pH strip through here right now just to kind of gauge where I'm at because, um, again, I'm not experienced at this and I'm not really sure at what point. So this one needs a little more cooking. I'm going to get my pH strip and come on over here and do a test. So the way I do that is I'm just going to wet my finger here and make a little wet spot and put that in and it's green. This one is cooked, which is a little vexing because that one is not cooked. So what I'm gonna do is turn this down to keep warm and hopefully just kind of hold it for a little bit while this one cooks up. I've got this one on high and I'm hoping to get these two at the same point. And then we will uh, proceed forward after, hopefully after this one gets up to the proper place. All right, now I'm gonna stir this one a little and see, uh, I'll run a pH strip through here just to check it and see if this one's cooked. Um, we shall see. It's very fluffy. <laughs> Hot process is fascinating to me, it really is. It's so, it's so different than cold process. Now, I have not been brave enough to even think about doing the um, high temperature hot process, but I've watched a lot of videos and I think it's fascinating. Maybe I might give it a try sometime, but I'm still really intimidated. All right, I'm gonna wet my finger. And that is, all right, let me show you here. Here's my pH strips and you want, uh, we wanna be between eight and 10, so the nine, seven range in the green. And it is green. I don't know if you can pick that up, but this is also cooked. I'm surprised. And really glad. So these are both cooked. So what I'm gonna do now is turn this down to warm. And uh, the next step is I'm gonna let these cool for just a few minutes. And what I have here is my little Pyrex. This is gonna be my uh, goji berry powder. And I want this 
to be warm, one of the tricks to having a fluid hot process is to have everything warm, oops, to have everything warm when you're working with it. Um, even the mold, like the silicone inset in my mold, I'm going to just give it a quick zap for maybe 10 seconds in the microwave. I'm going to have this, I'm going to microwave this little Pyrex to be warm. And um, I have my additives, my hemp and yogurt are cozied up around the crock pots here, kind of getting radiant heat. And because um, what happens when it gets cold is it gets that crusty, crumbly. So if you keep everything warm that you're working with, it will stay fluid a little bit longer. Just those few extra seconds help you get a nice hanger swirl and keep things more fluid. So I'm going to go pop this in the microwave and my inset for my mold and kind of get everything warmed up. And then we'll come back and super fat our, um, put our yogurt and our super fat in our crock pots. Okay. It's time to super fat, so I'm going to take the lids off here, set them off to the side, and here we go. So this is one ounce of hemp oil and three tablespoons of Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt. I think you can use regular yogurt. Um, that's just what I have. I'm going to get this all mixed in. And I've actually turned my crock pots off now and they'll stay nice. The radiant heat in there is gonna keep warm. Um, so I don't have to worry about, you know, the crock pots getting too cold. So I'm gonna get this stirred in and then I'm gonna take the temperature and uh, see if I wanna put those essential oils in. It's really hot right now and I don't want the essential oils to dissipate out. So I have my colors off to the side, and um, I am going to add a little titanium dioxide into the uncolored portion that doesn't have the hibiscus or the goji powder, just to brighten it up a little, because I want those colors to stand out. Now my hope is, uh, with the hibiscus powder, that it will stay pink. It's, I'm curious to see, this is kind of a test run here, because in cold process, when you put it in to cold process and it goes through the cook, it turns you know, like a beige color, which is still very lovely, but I'm very curious to see after putting it um, in here after the cook if it'll stay pink. So this will be a fun experiment. All right, I think I've got that all mixed in, and I'm going to take the temperature here. One ninety one, okay, and one eighty six over there. Yeah, that crock pot's definitely cooler. So I'm going to let this sit for just a couple more minutes before I throw those essential oils in. Uh, they're still a little bit hot, and I'll keep this cozied in here, staying warm in between the two crock pots. When it comes time to fill my uh, mold, I'm going to have to move one of these crock pots out of the way. So, but you'll know it's there. Let me get the lid on that one. So yeah, I want to keep the lid on here so they don't dry out while I'm waiting for them to just cool down just a little. It's a good workout for your arm. My arms are getting sore. Not sore, but <laughs> that's a lot of stirring. It's kind of a, kind of a workout. All right lid on this and we'll come back in just a few minutes when it's time to get the essential oils blended in and we'll get the colors going. All right, it's been a good couple of minutes, five or so, and these are still very warm, but I feel like it's time to move forward. So I've got my essential oil, the lime and sweet orange blend that's going to go into each of these. Oh, this smells so fresh. Goodness, that smells good. Very citrusy. I find citrus is just bright, kind of wake you up in the morning sort of a thing. Let's see, I'm going to use my handy dandy 
scoop here. I'm going to take a scoop out of each of these for my goji powder. There. Goji berry powder is going into the Pyrex, and now we'll color these other ones. I'm going to do titanium dioxide over here, and the hibiscus flower powder over here. I'm going to get these all stirred in, and I'm going to have to move one of these crock pots off to the side so that I can put the mold in here to fill up. Got to move a little bit quickly because I want to keep it going while everything's very warm. start scooping in just plopping literally so I know this looks a little crazy now but stick with me I'm going to go ahead and put all this one in because this little bucket's going to cool off the fastest. And then we'll run our hanger through and tap it down on the ground really hard to get out any air pockets because this is very thick. I'm going to kind of slosh it around so that we get some goji powder and everything. All right, here we go. Okay, it's the next day. Uh, I just put this off to the side, let it cool off and harden up overnight. So here we are. And I can say that the hibiscus flower powder did not stay pink. One of the reasons I know that is with the extra batter I poured. So here is what the hibiscus flower powder looks like today. And this is the uncolored portion. These little end pieces didn't have any of the goji powder. So I can see that that's kind of a pretty caramel orange. But um, so in cold process, it turns beige. In hot process, it turns this sort of kind of a lovely, 
I don't know. It almost looks like, I don't know, blueberry? It's not blue, though. It's not gray. It's not blue. It's not brown. I don't know what color that is, but it's pretty. It's very pretty, but it's definitely not pink. So let's get this out of the mold and see. I'm hoping I didn't have too many air pockets in there. I banged it really hard uh, after I got it in the mold down on the ground, and so I'm hoping that took care of any air pockets. And um, I you know, had that problem with separation yesterday, and that was a bit of a bugger, but I do think that that was my fault that I didn't have it at a thick enough trace before I started cooking is what the conclusion that I came to. So all of that going into this, it's still, I hope, going to be a really fabulous soap. And I have a little end piece from the scraps that I got out of the crock pots that I will do a lather test at the end here. So there is the top. It's a little rustic, but I think it's actually really pretty. So let's get in here and see what we've got. Let's get into these. Um, this is one of these funny cases. It happens once in a while in soap making where the colors look great, the scent smells great, but they don't go together. I think these are really earthy and rustic looking and I'm, no air pockets. It looks smooth. I'm digging the colors, but it just, to me, this doesn't smell citrusy. Now the lime and the essential oils smell fantastic, but it doesn't, to me, they don't go together. So that is a little bit of a bummer for me. But I think these are beautiful soaps. Um, but yeah, every once in a while, the scent and the colors just don't match up for me. And this is one of those cases. But with all that being said, let's keep cutting and see how those swirls came out. Oh, I think it's really pretty. I just think hot process is fascinating and I'm really enjoying learning it. Um, so I've got, you know, got a good learning curve here. There's a lot of stuff I need to learn yet, but sorry, if you can hear my water lines glugging in the background, they're really loud down here where my soap studio is. I'm like right next to all of that in the next room. So if you ever hear that in the back of my videos, I apologize. That's just my gluggy water lines. I think it's cool. Okay, so that hibiscus flower powder. Yeah, not staying pink. So for me now, knowing I've tried it in cold process, I've tried it in hot process, and I think for me personally, from this time out, I'm going to save that hibiscus flower powder for facial masks and bath salts and things where it's not going to lose that gorgeous hue. But I had fun trying it in soap, and I do think it's very pretty. I don't know, it almost looks like crushed blueberries to me, but not blue. I don't know, you know how when you grind up blueberries and they get that sort of grayish blue hue? That's kind of what it's reminding me of. But I think these look really earthy. I don't know, maybe if I ever did this color scheme again, I would do maybe a cedar wood or a patchouli or something more herbal with that color scheme. But I'll, I think that the lime and the orange essential oil is really bright. It has stayed very strong today. Um, and essential oils, especially citrus ones, can really fade out in soap. So I'm hoping, because I put it in before or after the cook, that these essential oils will stay nice and fragrant for longer. The, the citrus ones can be tricky like that. But the swirls, it just tickles me that I can get these kind of swirls in a hot process. So a couple of things here about hot process is um, these are a little bit wet today. So I will be um, not stamping these today. I'm going to give them a couple of days to firm up. I normally stamp my cold process the same day I cut, but these I'm going to give a little time to dry out because they feel a little wet to me. When I say wet, I just mean I can feel some moisture there. 
Um, so I will be stamping these in a couple of days. And also, even with hot process, this did go through the cook and saponification, but I am still going to let these cure for probably six weeks, especially because I do feel moisture in there. So these bars will lose weight and they'll just dry out and get hard and um, all the good stuff. You know, you want your bars to be fully cured. The longer the better, actually. They'll last longer, they get milder with time. So sitting on the curing rack for a while is never a bad thing. It's always good. Oh, that's cool. It's got like a little, it's kind of look like rock formation or something. But overall, I am very happy with the aesthetics of these. I think they're pretty. And um, like I said, I grabbed, I scraped off all the, when I unmolded these little guys, I scraped off all the extra bits and um, made a little soap ball that, uh, and because it's saponified, it's safe to lather with. So I will do a lather test after I get done cutting all these up for you. I like that little uh, striation line through there. So I am definitely enjoying the hot process soap making process. <laughs> I think it's really fun. It's different. It's challenging me. So that's good. I like to be challenged. So this is cool. Um, and I definitely think I'll revisit this, you know, every once in a while I just want to mix it up and uh, so I'm definitely going to keep this in my hip pocket for something to try when I need a challenge. I really wanted to give that hibiscus flower powder a try in here and I did and there you go. <laughs> so maybe I saved you having to worry about the pink. Of course, if you love this color, I mean, if I ever wanted like a really earthy sort of granite color, I think that's great. And the goji berry powder to me is very similar to what turmeric looks like. So that's interesting. So I just absolutely love the science of soap making. I think it's fascinating. I think it's fun. And at the end of the day, you get a really awesome product to use. So I love soap. <laughs> Pretty much love everything about it. So yeah, it's a little blobby there, but still, it was fluid enough to get that hanger through. So here is the little nugget of soap that I just got all the scraps and uh, when I was cleaning out the bowls and mashed them together and made this little disc. So let's give this a lather test. So, and again, it, this is safe to use because the pH is neutral on it, but it does need to cure just for longevity and mildness and all that, but it's fine to use today. So it lathers so nice. Let me just say, this lathers wonderfully. Big, fluffy, bubbly lather. Really happy with this. It feels really smooth. I think the goat milk, the yogurt, it's so nice. So I'm super happy with these bars. I just wish the color and the fragrance went together a little better, but mm, the lather smells just mildly citrus. I think this is wonderful. So I am overall very happy with it. I need to coordinate my colors and fragrance a little better next time, but I think it's a great bar of soap. So we'll come back and clean these up and stamp them when they've dried out a little bit. <laughs>